The detect events from Force Play's pipeline operation automatically detects the foot strike and foot of events using the force threshold from the FZ channel and the markers that have been designated. You can adjust the force threshold and the left and right anterior and posterior markers. In this example, I'm going to clear my events and I'm going to change my left posterior marker from the left ankle to the left heel. Now, when I run the pipeline operation, we can see that the foot strike and foot off events for the left foot have been put into place automatically. Once event markers have been placed in the time bar, either manually or through the detect events from force plate operation, the autocorrelate events pipeline operation can be used to correlate the remaining gate cycle events. You are able to alter the marker that is used You can also select whether it is the X, Y or Z component that you want to use. And finally, you can select whether the derivative is the position, the velocity or the acceleration. Running this operation with the only after existing box checked will result in events being placed after those that already exist. Unchecking the box and running the operation will result in event markers being placed before as well. Once gate cycle events have been placed in the time bar, the calculate gate cycle parameters pipeline operation can be used to calculate the cadence, the walking speed, the step time, the foot off and contact events, the single or double support, and the stride and step length parameters. All of these parameters can have their units adjusted. The left and right markers can also be selected. Once the operation has been run, you can find the parameters in the log window. The process static plugin gate model pipeline operation can be used once the VST containing the markers needed for the plugin gate model have been attached, the subject properties have been entered, and the markers have been correctly labelled. The properties we can adjust are the first and last frame, the marker diameter which is in millimetres, and whether the left and right foot and head segments are assumed to be horizontal or not. We can see here that now the static plugin gate model has been run. We can also see that we have new model outputs such as the angles and the plugin gate bones. After the dynamic trial has been captured, the trial has been labelled correctly, all gaps have been filled and any other pipeline operations such as filtering have been run, the process dynamic plugin gate model can be run. The properties we can adjust are the first and last frame, the marker diameter in millimetres, whether the reaction reference frame applies to the proximal segment, the distal segment or the global frame, and we can also adjust the radius of gyration of the pelvis and the thorax. Once the model has been run, we can see that the model outputs have been populated. By default, the power is calculated as a scalar value. However, we can also adjust the power output so that it exports the individual contributions from the X, Y, and Z components, as we can see here. The run static and dynamic body language models allow you to run static and dynamic bodybuilder scripts, which in turn allows you to perform biomechanical modeling.
The advantage of this pipeline operation is that it allows you to run scripts and therefore biomechanical modeling directly through Nexus. And you can see the results in real time. If for whatever reason the script fails, you can debug by checking the communications log. There are numerous things you can do with Bodybuilder and the body language scripts. But for the purposes of today, I'm going to show you a simple script that is used in both the static and dynamic body language model pipelines. The body language script is a simple text file that has the file extension .mod. And in this case, I've saved my script in the same folder I have my data in purely for convenience. The script I'm going to show you will define the optional points of the left thigh and the left knee markers. These are defined as optional points in case there is a gap in any of those trajectories. If there is a gap, the script will fail, but the optional points will prevent this from occurring. Then I'm going to create a local coordinate system for the left thigh cluster. Now everything run in this if statement is run in the static body language model part of the pipeline. What we're doing here is we're placing the knee markers in the local coordinate system of the left thigh cluster. In this second if statement, which is run in the dynamic body language model part, we're saying that if the markers of the left thigh cluster exist, then we can recreate the knee markers in the global coordinate system. And finally, the markers will be exported as modeled markers. Now that we've seen the code, Let's see the code in action. I've already loaded a static trial with all the appropriate markers. That is the three that are on the left thigh cluster, and the two left knee markers. Now I'm going to load the run static body language model pipeline operation. When I click on it, I need to load the model file and I do so by pressing this button here. I've already navigated to the folder in which my model is being kept and I'm going to double click it to load it. Now, when I press play, we can see here with the check mark that the model has been run successfully. I can also check this by opening up the log and I can see here on the bottom line that, is, that the code has succeeded with zero errors. After saving my static trial, I've now loaded my dynamic trial, which is simply my subject squatting. I'm now going to unlabel my two knee markers just to show you where the modeled markers will be recreated. Now I'm going to add the run dynamic body language model into the pipeline. And like the static one, I'm going to load the same model. This time, when I execute this operation, we can see that the model markers have been created where the original markers were. Just like the original trajectories, we can plot and export the new modeled markers. Nexus 2 allows direct interface with MATLAB. This allows the user to be able to directly edit the C3D file within Nexus, as opposed to having to export the data to an external source. A few of the things we can do is filter both trajectory and analog data in MATLAB, set gate cycle events, and do any biomechanical modeling directly through the Nexus 2 MATLAB interface, amongst other things. Today, I'm going to show you a simple example script where we use the trajectories of the four pelvis markers to create the sacrum, mid pelvis, and pelvis origin modeled markers.
Then we're going to create a coordinate system at the pelvis origin. And finally, we're going to output these directly to the C3D file as modeled markers. There are different ways that we can use the Nexus 2 MATLAB interface. The first is at the bottom of the screen in the communications window. We open it by double clicking on the name. On the left of the panel, we need to input the file path of the MATLAB script that you want to execute, and I've already done so. Below, if your script requires arguments, you can place them in this box. Each string should be surrounded by a single quote and separated by a comma. To the right is the communications window, where you can see if the commands have been successful and to debug the script if you have to. Pressing the Create Pipeline button will create a pipeline operation under the current pipeline, with the name of the M file being appended to the pipeline. Also, the parameters will already be set. Now, we can either run the pipeline by pressing play, or we can run the script through the communications window. Either way, MATLAB will be opened and the script will be executed. We can now see that the script has been run successfully through the communications window. We also have modeled markers, and we can see the modeled markers in the 3D workspace. To run MATLAB through the pipeline, we go to the data processing heading and double click on run MATLAB operation. We can change the name by double clicking on it. We also need to set the file path. In this example, my script has no arguments, so I can leave it blank. I can also press the Launch MATLAB button to open MATLAB if needed. Now, when I hit play, the script will be executed. And we can see here that the script has successfully been executed. You don't only need to execute the MATLAB scripts through Nexus. You can execute the script directly through MATLAB itself. One way is to execute the script through the command window. Another way is through the script editor itself by pressing the play button. One thing I find useful when writing the script itself is to execute the script cell by cell, in this case by pressing Shift, Control and Enter. And as we can see, the C3D file is edited in real time. Another great feature of the Nexus 2 MATLAB interface is the ability to debug. In this case, I have intentionally mislabeled a marker in my script. I'm running the script through the script editor. But no matter how I execute the script, be it through MATLAB or Nexus, we will get the error messages through both MATLAB and the Nexus MATLAB log and the general communications log. And we can see here that I've misspelled the name of the marker, which is the error. Biomechanical modeling can also be done with Python, the free scripting language. Just like the MATLAB interface with Nexus 2, with Python, you can edit the C3D file directly. For example, you can set gate cycle events, edit the trajectory and analog data, and create model outputs to name a few things. The advantage of Python is that it is free to use. In this video, I'm not going to show you how to write a Python script or how to install it. The purpose of this segment is to show you how to execute a simple Python script from the data processing pipeline. And in this case, a modeled marker will be placed between the ASI markers 
and another between the PSI markers. To execute the Python script, we go to the data processing heading and select the run Python operation. By highlighting the run Python operation in my current pipeline, we can edit the properties. In this case, we need to select the Python script file. And so I'm going to click on this button. And I will have to navigate to the folder containing the relevant script. I'm going to select the script by double clicking on it. This script doesn't require any arguments. Another thing we can do is to launch the Python shell if we need it. When we hit play, we can see that the modeled markers are created in the 3D workspace and also in the modeled markers list. As the code is being executed, the communications log window will be updated accordingly. If there are any errors, they will be displayed in the log and can be debugged accordingly. For more information about the last two data processing operations, process OCST and process score and SARA, please refer to the video dedicated to calibrating and processing score and SARA.